What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 49 of the Rise to Glory here at Gibraltar Apex and today we are taking on Zenit St. Petersburg in the Europa League. Hopefully we can get a half decent result today, it's going to be a tricky game. Since the last episode that has been a few games, of course if you missed last episode go check it out, it was a game against Fulham. Away from home we actually only lost 2-1 which wasn't a bad performance really. Since then as you can see the five games I mentioned, one of which was actually against Zenit St. Petersburg uh, away from home in Russia. Today we take them on of course at home. Anyway, since the last episode, we'll start with the league games and go through them, as always, in chronological order. The first result here against Glasses United, a 4-0 win. Probably could have and should have been more goals, but it was a dominant display. Something that is going to become a, a quite familiar sight, I guess you could argue, here in Gibraltar. The next game was against Gibraltar Lions, of course, the club that now have a tycoon owner. We beat them 3-0, of course. Um... If you guys can remember, we looked at their transfer history. We were pretty underwhelmed by the players they brought into their club. Despite the fact they're owned by kind of a, a sugar daddy, and if we look at their landmarks, obviously they've got that tycoon owner. Simply put, they've not got the lure of our team just because they don't play in Europe that often. It's worth noting, however, Gibraltar Lions are in second place. They are kind of our nearest rivals, and in fact, that win that we got against them 3-0 is the only defeat they've had so far this season. Anyway, the next game was against Zenit St. Petersburg, as you can see, Promes and Hulk and uh, Valentini getting the goals for them. Ben Connolly did get us a consolation, and in fact, uh, well, when Connolly scored, we were already 3-0 down, so it was a, certainly a consolation despite its earliness. Um, but in the second half, we looked a little bit better, we kept a clean sheet, hoping we could do more of that, of course, today. The next result against Manchester 62 was a very, very good result, 7-0. Again, kind of going to see these a lot now. Ian Cooker with four for us. The Canadian striker, great job here. You know, I've brought him in. I like this guy as a striker. I don't see him as a long-term option. You can see his consistency isn't great. My assistant also thinks that he has already reached his potential, aged only 18. But in terms of what he brings, he brings pace. He brings the ability to finish. And uh, yeah, a really good performance there, get in four goals, one of which was from the penalty spot. And then in the last result, another one of kind of the former domestic rivals, I guess you could argue, St. Joseph's. We beat them 2-0 here, Ben Connolly and Leon O'Connell with the goals. Good to see two Gibraltarian players getting the goals for us, Ben Connolly also getting the Man of the Match award. So anyway, in terms of where we are in the league, five games have only been played. It feels like more than that because of how long our pre-season is with all the European games. Uh, but we are top. We are unbeaten. I don't think we've conceded a goal yet. We have not. We've scored 23, conceded zero. If we could keep that going, that would be incredible. But, you know, we'll take it one game at a time, really. In terms of goal scorers, uh, Gimo Lorenko the second, the Mozambican, right up there at the moment. He's had a great start to his time at the club with five goals. And also nice to see Kuka, who got four goals in one game, actually in the goal scoring charts based off that one match alone. Lorenko uh, kind of leading the way with the average ratings. Gary doing a decent job for us, our Spanish centre mid. He's had a great start to the year, uh, a 7.92 average rating in all competitions. And also George Putnam, immediate impact of 4.48, uh, oh sorry, 8.48 average rating in the league so far with three goals and three assists. Granted, his three goals have all been penalties for us, but despite that, uh, he's looking like a great signing, the right back, and hopefully he can kind of continue on in that vein of form from the right back position. And, well, uh, I guess he's surpassing a lot of expectations with just kind of how well he's played of late. Anyway, looking at our squad here, just a quick rundown Kuka leading the goal scoring charts, uh, Wanma also doing well. Of course, if you missed it, we nicknamed Wanma Aguasil to just Wan Wanma. A little bit easier, runs, rolls off the tongue just a little bit more. Of course, he has now got one a goal and two assists. He was actually out with an injury, which was a little bit of a shame, but it did open up an opportunity uh, for the one, the only Ben Connolly to come into the side, and he took that opportunity really, really well. He's got seven goals in ten games, two of which were substitute appearances. And the Gibraltarian has kind of continued to perform pretty well for us, and that's uh, good to see. In terms of average ratings, we've already talked about Putnam, Lorenko the second, Gary. Jeremy Braun has done well. He's only played three games. Unfortunately, he is out with strained stomach muscles. This guy's just a very, very good kind of well-rounded, I guess, midfielder. The kind of player who we have on the bench can play left mid and centre mid. A nice player to have, but he's done well when he's been fit. Uh, Lumomir Saka has also done well. The Slovenian, oh sorry, Slovakian uh, centre-back. 25 years old, this guy. Done a great job for us. Since he came in, of course, released by Pompey in League One, who he joined on a free. At the moment, a 7.9 average rating for him in the league. 
So anyway, we are going to get into today's Zenit St. Petersburg game. Next episode, of course, is going to be episode 50. To mark the occasion, I'm going to do a slightly longer live com. I believe we're going to do the Celta Vigo, College Europa, Gibraltar Lions, Europa Points and Fulham game. So it'll probably be a five-match kind of quadruple header no quadruples five quintuplet header that doesn't that doesn't sound right does it but that's what it's going to be uh, but yeah let's focus on today's game we are taking on as i mentioned zenit there is a little bit of team news to let you guys know about we are, of course, going to play our 4-4-2 counter. Unfortunately for us, Robert Evans is still out with his injury. He got a chest injury. I can't remember if he had that last episode, but the young Northern Irish centre uh, mid injured. Bit of a shame. We'd like to have him fit for this game. Jeremy Prawn, who we've already talked about, is injured. And also Danny Evans, who we kind of signed to play centre mid right back, kind of wherever he needed to, was also injured. He had a strained wrist. Not a major injury. But one just to let you guys uh, kind of be aware of, because with his kind of injury, it's seen Tom Elliott come into the side. The young defensive midfielder, only 18 years old. You know, this is going to be a big stage for him to try and perform on. In terms of the rest of the team, pretty standard. Uh, in goal, we go with, of course, Romero, the young American goalkeeper. At 19 years old, this guy looks absolutely incredible for us. At left back, we go with Jesus or Jesus. In centre back, we go with Holmes and Saka. Right back, we go with Putnam, Lorenko, Ongeles. Or Angeles. I've still not decided how I want to say Eric's name, but um, he's done okay. He's had a bit of a hit and miss start, really. Of course, got sent off quite memorably, and his discipline has been a little bit of an issue. You can see he's got booked in five continental games, uh, of se oh, sorry, booked in five of of seven games, which. It's a lot of yellow cards to pick up, really, for a midfielder. And then up front for today's game, we're going to go with Kutka and Wanma. Uh, in terms of the team on the bench, Connolly is there, Leon O'Connor is there, uh, Robson is there. So we have got options. It's going to be a tricky game here. Of course, we've lost the last two live comms in this competition. I believe both of them have been 2-1. It'd be nice if we could get a win in the group stage today. I do believe Zenit St. Petersburg are actually struggling uh, in the group stage. They've kind of not been particularly impressive against Celta Vigo and Fulham. It'd be nice if we could kind of add further misery to them today. But you know what? We're going to go out there. We're going to have some fun. I uh, still don't feel like we're ready to challenge it, kind of this level of European football. But at the same time... I mean, we're going to do our utmost here. <laughs> Getting out of the group is all but gone at this point. We'd need to win pretty much our last three remaining games. I mean, stranger things have happened, it's, but it's probably not going to happen here. Um, but yeah, if we could win a leg, that would be great. We get some pretty decent prize money for winning a game, so that could be significant. And Gary scores. He's offside, though, unfortunately for us. And four minutes in, we're denied an opportunity. Although set-piece whipped in, and Saka heads it narrowly wide. Two really good early opportunities here. Hopefully we won't live to regret them. Shame about that Gary goal being given offside, but we're coming actually forward with the ball again here. And Kutka to Wanma. This is our third chance of the game early on. Wanma saved by the keeper. I do believe that was a clear-cut chance. In fact, it wasn't. So three clear-cut chance or three non-clear-cut chances coming our way. For some reason, we are on extended highlights. <laughs> let's change that. I had a bit of a suspicion we might be. So let's sort that out. We're going to go on key. Hopefully, we get some good opportunities come our way. They're actually coming forward though with Redkin here. Lays it out to Kachunga. And now we're proms. Now, Trisico, I hope that's how you say his name. I know he's an Italian left back in real life. I believe he plays for... I don't know if he plays for Zenit, actually, in real life. Actually, no, he does. He does ignore me. Weird, actually. I've noticed Zenit have kept a few of their players through all the years of this save. I believe they've still got Hulk as well, which is a little bit kind of surprising. They've also got Proms, or Promes, uh, who I believe is a Dutch player who plays for Lokomotiv Moscow, if my Russian football knowledge is adequate. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. Um, but yeah, nil-nil here. We actually just hit the woodwork and did have a clear-cut chance. We're doing okay. We're creating opportunities and we're not being outclassed here by Zenit. But it'd be nice to, you know, reward ourselves for all the chances we're having with a goal here. If we could get it before half-time, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Although there is going to be defending on the agenda right now as they bring forward the ball. A nice block there, but now back out with Proms. And Redkin, with the header, finds the back of the net. Anvar Redkin makes it 1-0 and... Well, I want to say it's against the run of play. We have slightly edged possession, but it's fair to say Zenit have grown into this game in the second half, and despite the chances we've had, I mean, it's not unjust to this goal. Problems with the ball whipped in, and, um, well, Redkin there with a, a header, a leaping header at that. A few players probably should have done a little bit better in the air for us there defensively. And I did talk about how a goal for us before halftime would be fantastic. If I'm being honest, a goal here before halftime for them is just catastrophic i'm gonna to need to tell the players to show something else 
We were kind of competitive to begin with. We have got a few yellow cards as well on our defenders. That does concern me. The the kind of sensible part in my brain says, sub off the defenders, you know, take off whoever's less fit, you know, don't risk it. The other part of my brain says, if I bring on anyone, it's going to be a problem. I am going to bring on Danny Evans, who, as I mentioned, has been out injured. Saka, not had a great day at the office, only a 6.7 average rating. So we're going to bring in Danny Evans. He's been out with a... I can't remember what the injury was now. It was only a minor one. I think he was out for less than a week. So his condition isn't too bad. He's still not fully fit, but we'll give him a chance here to kind of stretch his legs. And we do actually have the ball here cleared away, but only as far as Elliot. Gary with the ball now. To Lorenko, shoots from range, hits the woodwork, can someone get the rebound? They can't, what an incredible effort that was. And that's probably going to be cleared away though, but that was a crazy shot. And now we have a corner, ball whipped in, headed away, but can we, can we box Zenit in here? Can we force them to go long and give us possession? We can, Putnam with the ball, Holmes tries to pick out Lorenko, as, who as we saw just a second ago hit the woodwork. Now with Elliot, nicely moving the ball around here, headed away, but only as far as Elliot again, Kutka. To Lorenko, flicks on Wanma. What a finish, my son. It is 1-1 here, and you have to say, it's probably deserved. Wanma with the goal, Lorenko the second with the assist, and it was Kuka. Nice bit of build-up play there. A fantastic flick on header, and then it's just a half volley and a crest finish into the roof of the net for Wanma. A uh, kind of a narrow and tight angle, but he managed to make it work. And with 27 minutes left, it's 1-1, and... Well, we've been performing quite well here. I don't feel I need to change our system, although I might do as the ball gets whipped in. Holmes heads it away, but still with Zenit here. Proms back post free, and he hammers it in. Seven yards out there. An easy goal for him. The Dutch winger, seventh goal of the season for him. In fact, no, it's not the seventh. It's the third goal of the season for him. I can't read numbers, apparently. But we just gave him a bit too much space. We stayed a little bit too narrow, and, well, the keeper has absolutely no chance with that finish. He just lashes that in. Seven yards out, hit with power, keeper has no time to react. Going to make a few changes here because we are struggling for fitness. In terms of what I'm going to change, I mean, that's that's the burning question right now. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I want to bring off Elliot, but I've not really got a ton of options. I'm going to move Putnam into centre defence in mid, then bring on Peter Morgan. I think the other change I'm going to make, actually, is I'm going to bring on Ben Connolly for Kuka, who's had a bit of a, a game to forget, unfortunately, for us, the Canadian. Not turned up today. But it is still 2-1. There is still time in this game. And I think for the last five minutes, we're just going to gonna go for it. We're going to go on the attack. We're going to see if we can make something happen. We've kind of got to, at this point, at least try. So let's see what our players can offer us going forward today. You're going to commit a few men forward. We're going to leave ourselves open at the back. We've not shamed ourselves with this performance here, but it is a little bit disappointing, I guess, to peg Zenit back to lose it in the manner we have. I mean, looking at the stats... Yes, Zenit have had more shots. They've had less possession. It's a game with a few kind of clear-cut chances. And in the end, it's a few lapses in defensive concentration that have cost us. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased with that result. Pretty good reaction all in all. In terms of how that shapes up our league, it does mean that we can no longer finish in the kind of knockout stages of the Europa League this year. Not that that's entirely surprising, but it's worth noting that. And well, that wasn't the worst performance in the world. We're knocked out the group, as I mentioned, but we've not raised too many eyebrows with that. We've kind of performed as was expected. Anyway, guys, the next episode I have for you uh, will be against Celta Vigo. It's kind of weird. I think the last three live comms have all been 2-1 defeats in Europe. Hopefully, we can break that kind of jinx and maybe get a win against Celta Vigo or Fulham in episode 50. Hopefully, I'll see you guys for that one too. If you have enjoyed this video, as always, smash the like button. Uh, if you're new here, of course, subscribe. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.